Hi, I'm Anthony Gettig, amateur radio call sign N8VOX, the everyday ham. And in this video, I want to do something a little bit different. I'm going to format this as more of a presentation, something that could be repurposed and used at a club meeting, whether that's in person or virtual. So uh, full permission is granted to play this back at your club meetings, wherever uh, and whenever they may happen. Okay, so the subject of this uh, presentation is Q codes. So, uh, of course, it's brought to you by the letter Q. <laughs> of course it is. Um, I have a cute little story to share with you. One day I was at my QTH having some chips and queso while I was having a queso with my friend. There was a little QSB, but overall things were going well. Then out of nowhere came this awful QRM. I asked my pal, hey, do you hear that, QSL? He's like, QSL, QSL, maybe we should QSY. I replied, QSL, I'm QSY. So we went to a new frequency and there was QRN. Well, we decided to QRO, but that didn't work because, well, we had been QRP. After all that effort, we decided it was time to go QRT. Well, what do you do? It's just uh, one of those things that <laughs> happens in a cute story like that. Anyways, so uh, I do want to jump into this with, uh, with a couple of, uh, a couple of disclaimers. First of all, the definitions in this presentation are from an excellent PDF from the ARRL and from my personal experience. If you'd like to find that PDF, just go to ARRL.org, search the site for Q code, and it should be the first, very first result you come across. So should you learn Q codes? Well, Q codes are kind of like shorthand for radio. Their use goes way back to the telegraph days. Uh, you know, with, with Morse code and, and uh, way before any kind of sideband. This presentation covers some of the most commonly used Q codes that you'll hear on the air, or at least the ones that I hear on the air. Uh, and keep in mind that the meanings can differ slightly between use on CW and SSB. And that was my repeater. <laughs> I, I really am an everyday ham, anyways. Um, so yeah, anyways, QSL? QSL. All right, let's jump into it. The very first one we can learn is QSL. And as you just heard, it has kind of two meetings. Um, first of all, it can be uh, a question as in, you know, uh, I'm in park K1234, QSL? So, you know, you, if you listen to uh, parks on the air, do any parks on the air uh, hunting or activating, you, you probably he have heard something like that. QSL as a question. It can also be confirming an inquiry as in QSL, you're in kilo one, two, three, four. So uh, there you go. That is QSL, and you'll hear you'll hear it a lot. QSO, QSO. Sometimes, as I just said, it's pronounced QSO. It's a, just a conversation with another operator. That's all it is. It's a contact. Hey, I made you know 140 uh, QSOs, 140 QSOs uh, contacts in that last contest or whatever. Uh, an in-person conversation, sometimes called an eyeball QSO, which is kind of cute. Uh, QRP can mean a couple of different things. The operator is using low power, that is 5 watts or less. More and more, I do hear stations running 10 watts saying that they're QRP. And what, what that would be, the differentiator there would be um, 10 watts um, uh, with single sideband versus uh, 5 watts for CW or, or another digital mode. So some folks running sideband at 10 watts, they're calling it QRP. You know, I don't have strong feelings either way, <laughs> but just know that. Also, uh, it can mean, um, shall I decrease my power or shall I, or, you know, I can, I'm going to decrease my power or shall I decrease my power? Again, you know, more in the, in the CW world, but uh, yeah, QRP, low power. That's what that means. Now, the opposite of that is QRO. And to go QRO to many folks means running power on your signal. That is, you're going to turn an amplifier on. And uh, especially in uh, in HF, of course, it uh, it also could mean maybe you have been operating on low power on your mobile, and somebody says, "Hey, can you you get a little weak into the into the repeater? Can you can you QRO?" And then yeah, just set it to high power, medium, high, what whatever. But QRO basically to increase power. Um, it can also be the question, you know, shall I QRO? So it just uh, it's all context. Uh, QRM. QRM is interference with your signal, whether that's intentional or not. Sometimes it's pronounced QRM, 
I have heard that on the air. And uh, again, whether it's intentional or not, it, it really, um, QRM could be anything. It could be an adjacent signal, especially like if it's a contest weekend um, uh, and there's just the band is packed and it's really hard to find that three kilohertz, right? <laughs> and to keep three kilohertz away, you may end up getting some QRM from an adjacent signal. It could be someone intentionally causing you interference. There's always that possibility. So um, anyways, QRM, no fun. You know, it could be out of your control too. Like maybe your neighbor, you know, just down, just down the street set up an electric fence. <laughs> or a new solar array, solar stuff. If it's a bad uh, charge controller, that, that can cause a lot of QRM. So yeah, you wanna, you wanna keep that in mind. QRN is similar to QRM, but different. It, it can certainly be interference. Basically, it's, it's just a lot of static on the signal. Um, and that could be caused by any number of things. It could be you know environmental, something in your shack. It could be uh, something outside. Um, it's just, it's static on the signal. So, and, uh, well, kind of, you know, almost related to that. Uh, it can be some, some static fading in, but typically signal fading in and out is QSB or sometimes pronounced, uh, QS Baker. I've heard that on the air quite a bit. That means the signal's fading in and out and, uh, sometimes static can fade over it and, and whatnot. Static takes the place of the voice, if you will. Uh, so yeah, signal fading in and out, typically band conditions changing in the middle of a QSO. So like you may start the conversation, um, and they're, you know, S eight, S nine, and then they just kind of slowly fade away and the signal comes back and yeah. So QSB, that's, that's what that is. Um, let's see here. Let me come back over here real quick. Cause yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, sure. We'll throw a little commercial in here. If you haven't subscribed, I would appreciate it if you did. <laughs> Just look for N8VOX, The Everyday Ham, and we will uh, uh, appreciate if you uh, subscribe to the channel. But anyways, let's continue. QST. It's not just the name of a magazine from the ARRL. Now, it is that, but uh, <laughs> it's more than that. It's a general call before transmitting a message to all amateurs on frequency. So um, when, when might you uh, hear this? This might be uh, like the beginning of a net. Like, okay, QST, the net is about to begin. Uh, sometimes I think if memory serves me right, at least it used to be amateur radio newsline, I say, QST, all radio amateurs. And then, then they go into the program, right? So QST is just, hey, I want to get your attention, and this is a general call for, uh, for everybody. So there you go, QST. QSY, you may have inferred what that means from the uh, little cute story in the beginning. Uh, most often it's used as a statement, as in, uh, I'm going to QSY to whatever frequency. Or maybe maybe you're talking to your friend on the repeater and you you find out you're within simplex distance. Hey, uh, let's QSY to simplex. Yeah, cool. All right. And again, sometimes it can be used as a question. Sh you know, shall I, shall I or we QSY? So QSY just means change in frequency. That's it. We're going to change the frequency. QTH. Most often, you will hear this in reference to your home location. That is where you live. Um, you know, for example, I'm mobile, but I'm almost to my QTH. Um, it can also, however, mean your location, as in where you are right now. Where are you currently? And um, yeah, QTH just means home, or here's where I am. And finally, QRZ, QRZ. Most of the time. It means you're ready for a call from another station. And, and when you hear QRZ, uh, it just means, hey, I'm ready for the next one. So, for example, say you're listening to a, uh, a Parks on the Air activation, and they say, okay, great, clearing with you. This is November 8, Victor Oscar X-ray, QRZ. And then, boom, comes the pileup, right? <laughs> so it just means I'm done with you, and I'm ready for the next call. Again, you can call it uh, QRZ. You can say QRZ. I, most of the time, you'll hear QRZ. So, uh, yeah, you'll definitely be using that one. And, again, this is by no means an exhaustive list. There are a whole lot more, which can be found in that PDF that I mentioned earlier. Uh, what are your favorite Q codes? Like, uh, which ones should I have mentioned in this presentation? I would love to hear from you. Leave a comment below if you're watching this online. 
Um, or you can uh, can find my channel and leave a comment there. Uh, if you're watching this in a, in a you know in a club setting, you can also uh, drop me an email. My uh, all my contact information is out there, and in fact, I've got it uh, here on on another slide. Matter of fact, there we go. That uh, there you go. Nvox at awrl dot net is how you can email me, and of course you can check out the YouTube channel for. Uh, this is the first presentation like this. Hopefully there will be more in the future, and I would encourage my uh, fellow ham tubers to do something similar. Let's start creating content that clubs, whether in person or virtual, can use uh, at their meetings. So, hope you got some value out of this. And uh, until next time. Take care. God bless. 73. I'm Anthony, N8VOX, the Everyday Ham.